Today we're going to go over all the features that you could possibly use with Notion's timeline view. We're going to try to we can interactively create something together and we can actively start to think about these Notion's group, sort, filter, the dependencies, table view, and some of the new features that they've come out. And I think it's really important to think about how you want to use this timeline view because you can sort of use this as a singular view to a bigger system, or you could use this as a view that you can basically organize almost everything about what you're doing. I'm going to try to show you how we can do that today. As you can see, when we created a new timeline view, we start with cards to show you how it works. It comes preloaded with these properties, dates, assign, and status, um, and it also comes with these table properties as well. And let me show you how we can sort of take advantage of it. It's cool you can shrink this as well. But there's a lot of properties to worth checking out in the timeline view. I think it's one of the only views in Ocean where you can practically make use of all of these features at once, as opposed to being able to only take advantage of a few of these in specific views. We're going to just go to the basic timeline view settings because these are really important. And when you create a new timeline view, it always pre-configures with the date being its primary property that it's being measured by. As you can see, today's August 1st and it's showing here with a big red line. The reason why this table here is showing is because we have the show table on. As you can see, you get more space to work within the view. Notice I just zoomed in. But I do think in some cases, having this show table is more practical than trying to fit everything these tiny rows, as you'll see later. There's this property shows because the show table is on. It's cool as you can treat this as a table and a timeline if you want. And obviously when you do that, it takes up a lot of space. And so like I just showed in the beginning, we can shrink these. Just drag, click, hold. And then notice how there's a little more space. We don't need the dates because we already have those dates showing. And then assign, we can also assign to ourselves. We can also Go back to here and notice how there's a second set of properties. And this is very similar to what we saw in the beginning, but this is specific to these entries, right? So now that we're showing the date, notice how it overwhelms the whole row entry, right? And there's no reason to have the date almost ever because you have these guidelines at all times. Change this time increment, obviously, as you can see here. It's nice they added hours, days, and weeks, but I think month is the default. We don't need this date so it's really important to be smart with these properties. And notice how this was a shorter way to show it. Obviously, you can have it here to have full name show. But that's totally optional, right? And this is just to show that you can interchangeably decide how you want what properties to show for these views. And maybe some sometimes you want repeating information to show on both these views. To illustrate that property, let's start this not started. And notice how we have it showing for both entries and this table, right? In this case, it's probably redundant. So maybe we don't need that. We want to emphasize it on the left side here. And then let's just remove that, right? Or actually, sorry, go back here. Let's remove this. Let's remove that um, because we have the icon shown. Because there's only one person whose name starts with R, just show that icon and you should be good to go. The name, it shows the name here. It shows the name there. In this case, it's just, again, redundant. So this is where you can start to save a little more space. You might want to show on the table first before looking over in relation to its date. So let's look at the filter. I think. The filters are really important. I think they're highly underutilized and it's really easy to set up, or at least I'll be trying to uh, show you in an easy way how to do it. Filter, let's do status. If we've started something, if we haven't started something, if we, these are the statuses that it comes with in the beginning, but you can remember that you can also create whatever status category you want because this is a collect property. I'm just gonna add the status here would be pretty nice to show. So let's go ahead and do that, boom. Now we can quickly go here. I'm just going to shrink it down. Let's hide it. I just did that by right clicking, hide and view. Even quicker way to organize your table properties in the timeline. I'm trying to illustrate here is a really easy way to group, filter your work or entries or whatever you're organizing by. And we just did that by adding a filter. And now you can just quickly toggle what has been completed. Um, and as long as it's categorized correctly, you'll always see it. Boom, this is completed. It's really important to know this blue filter texting is blue. Hover to the very top left-hand corner. It shows you how it's filtered by. When it's completely blue like that, it means that it's being filtered right now. And so if you want to reset it, it's important to click on it. Hover over to the top right corner of the, sidebar, uh, the search bar and click on the X. 
And there you go, the filter's been reset. All right, so we added this filter and let's, let's add a few more, right? Let's filter by people. Notice how easy it was to add a filter by selecting the property in which you want to filter by. It automatically creates that square. You can click out of it and it stays there. And if you want to delete it, if you want to have nested filters, you can create an advanced filter. So this would be saying all entries in which Ray is still working in progress filter. And notice how it turns into this nested filter where it doesn't tell you what it is, but it tells you the number of rules it has, which we've just created here. The more that you nest, the more powerful it can become. You just need to know what and how you want to filter by. And then even with the date, you can do stuff like this. Very flexible if you know what your constraints are. I think the more that you know your constraints with Notion, the more powerful that you're able to utilize this timeline view and configure in a way that works for you. So again, we added those filter views and we'll look at the sort feature next. Think about sorting, we think about perhaps what do we do last? What do we edit last? Um, I think that's something that if you've ever used a word processing program, it helps to know when you, where you last left off. In this case, even though we've completed something, maybe that's something that we worked on last. Let's show what, what you've worked on last first. And this is a very easy way to do this, and it starts with adding a property. It's going to the bottom, and it's last edited time. And this is a property that I think doesn't get it enough credit. An automatic property, so once you add it, you don't need to touch it. Notion does all the work for you. Obviously, you can change the format and the time format. But in this case, this is all we need. And maybe this doesn't matter to you, last edited time, but maybe if you still want to sort your entries from sort of a last edited perspective, this still might be of value to you. And so if you don't want to see it, we can always hide it. In this case, it doesn't matter if you hide it or show it in the beginning, and we want to go to the sort feature. And now we can sort by last edited time, and we do it by descending. The reason why card three is showing at the top is because we've edited it this the soonest compared to these ones. 11.09, 11.12. Now, last edited time is the primary way in which all of these entries are being sorted. That could be of value to you. Maybe it's not always the way you want to look at it, but if you do want to sort of rearrange top to bottom, notice how it tries to remove your sorting. So this is where you can remove it, don't remove it, do whatever you want, but it's good to know that if this breaks, right, you can always just add it back here, last edited time, and descent. That's a basic sort feature that is handy for most entries if you're trying to sort by recency. And the key here is recency and last edited time. The group feature, right? I think filter sort group, these this trifecta allows you to do most, if not almost everything you need. I mean, these are sort of the pillars of Excel. These are the starting points to beginning to organize data and information in a more structured manner, in a more meaningful manner. Let's dive into the group feature here. Again, I'm using all the properties that the timeline view defaults to when you create the timeline view database view. So we're gonna group by status. Let's see what happens here. So when that happens, right, it shows the sort. Again, this is handy. This is also more of a recent update, if I recall correctly. This basically just allows you to drag. And now we can sort of group entirely by status. And we can isolate our entries based on the status. Remember, we can do this with people. We can do this with, I think, any property, as long as it's meaningful to you and the way that you organize this information. Notice it when I do it by assignment, Ray, underutilized, it's worth experimenting with each of these settings. Now I'm going to go over these last two real quick. I think sub items with dependencies sort of take everything to a more visual level. Um, it allows you to create a lot more meaningful hierarchy than you have been able to in the past in 2022 particularly. All of these things have sort of been implemented into Notion, I think, in the last six to eight months. It's important to think about these things because I think these are going to intertwine into more of what Notion is becoming. Sub-items. So sub-items are really another layer that we can add to our entries. In the past, you had to, you could only create new entries, a singular entry, but this basically allows you to layer them under each other and nest them. So in this example, sub-items and parent items, right? This is just to show how that works. We can turn it on. What that does is it allows you to create parent and sub-items. And when we look at this property, we, we notice that these relationship properties are introduced. It's really important to understand that as soon as you do turn on sub items and click OK, you get these horizontal triangles that show next to your entries. And what that does is allows you to function exactly like a toggle, but it allows you to create a sub item under that parent item. 
And so when you do create it, notice what happens here, right? Parent item is card three. And now when you click on card three, you have sub as the sub item. Now what's cool with the timeline view, as soon as you create that new entry, and because you haven't included a date, when you hover over to the timeline view, it, it creates a hover of the entry you just created and you can select the date, click and bam. You can immediately create that date entry in relation to its parent item and it and quickly add it. So when you do that, it creates that permitted timeline. Again, shrink this by hovering over and sending it and setting its length that way as well. And in this case, we do have an end date. Maybe it's a singular date you're going for. So you can toggle that off. And notice how it's just an end. It's just a singular date. And now we can move this. But if you do want to sort of have an end date, again, it's you can use this toggle to expand it, right? Instead of having to go here, right? Turn this on and then select. This becomes a lot easier to shrink down and manage the length and move the date in relation to everything else here. So in this case, maybe the group feature does not make sense. So we're going to do none. Go back to sort of illustrating your sub and parent items. Again, this is infinitely. So you can add a new sub item there and then it creates it and then drag it. Let's shorten the date a little bit. Actually, we've got to move it a little bit. But what's also cool is you can create a sub item within a sub item. So if there's three or four layers of hierarchy, you can create that, right? What if there's another one? Boom. This is layered under here, this is layered under there, and this is layered under here, right? And because it's layered, the parent and sub items are only gonna be interacting with the child and parent item. So this isn't gonna be related to this, but this is related to this, which is related to this, which is related to that. But if you do toggle everything, boom, it disappears. So as you can imagine, this can take project management to new level. This is a better way to illustrate sprints, dates, and planning. You can easily toggle and create these infinitely through these sub items and parent items. Sub items, right? The more you think about it, I hope the more that you're like, man, maybe I don't need four databases. And maybe I just need to create three levels of hierarchy and create like a database template. When you combine dependencies with sub items, I think you can also take it to the next level. But again, right, like in this in this view, we're able to use all of these features in a more practical, cohesive way than some of the other views. And some of the other views don't have these features. And obviously I'm not saying you got to use everything, but I challenge you to sort of think about how you can combine some of these different types of ways of organizing information. Simple and not complicated, accessible and, and it's user friendly, right? I mean, those are all what we want, but you're probably not going to get it right the first time. And I think that's the hard truth to a lot of Notion stuff is it's iterative and it takes time to know what you want. And I think that's really important to know. Now, when you click on dependencies, we have this automatic date shifting. We have three settings, sort of think about dependencies. And this GIF sort of illustrates all you need to know. Shift only when dates overlap to see with dependencies, if something can't happen without another thing finishing, this would be very useful so that you can't start something unless something is actually done and those dates can't overlap. That option is useful for that reason. Shift and maintain time between items. That basically means let's add a set incremented of time between all of our entries automatically. So if something has a mandatory two day lead time, we need to include that lead time between every entry. And so this is a, that would be a great way to think about it and implement it within your view. And then we have our do not automatically shift, which is the way that the timeline view originated as um, and where nothing really changed. It was just free form. You would just click and drag and nothing would change or shift. And so these two other options are very new. This basically sort of allows you to plan sprints and sort of address that free form problem where you obviously can't start something if something doesn't finish. And so what's the point of having these be dependent if they don't automatically shift amongst each other or if there's a set incremented time between tasks, why can't we just add that in? So that's what that means to me. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Let's just do the shift only when dates overlap. So we've turned on dependencies and now we add, we've added the blocking and blocked by properties. And these again are relationship properties similar to parent and sub items, but these are gonna be dependencies that illustrate, hey, this can't happen unless this happens. That is how you would drag. You can visually do this by dragging, dropping. Notice how you can also delete these dependencies 
by hovering over and clicking on the X. I was just kind of freeforming that. But let's say card one has to be finished before card two can start. And card three is blocked by card two. So we can point that. And notice how this pops out. So when I click, drag, and then let go, it creates that card three can only happen after card two. And because of that automatic shift that we have in our settings here, even though card three's date was back here, it automatically shifted because card two's dependency forced card three to start here. And so again, if you're trying to sequentially order things and make sure that everything is done in order, as you can see, this dependency is very handy. Now let's try it with a shift and maintain time between. Because we've created this dependency of four days, every time we try to overlap it, that four day span is kept. Notice that. And for this one, that that zero day span is kept. No, it doesn't work, right? Because whenever you create that dependency, the original time frame stick. It automatically sticks. So I think that's the biggest difference between this and then do not automatically shift time, right? This is the original way. So you could do this, right? You could do that. You can get all these wishwashy lines. And obviously this doesn't make a lot of sense. But again, this is the original free form dependency structure where the arrows bend and the dependencies shift without this automatic overlap one. Remember, this is do the date shifting again. And again, this is shows as blocked by and blocking. This is these are the default values that Notion creates it, but I think you can name it whatever you want. Their naming convention that I think is pretty good for beginners. Now that we've sort of turned on everything, notice when you hide the toggles, the arrow is lost. Remember these arrows, these toggle icons show because of the sub item. And the dependencies, the arrows are showing because the dependencies are on. Again, we have the filter, sort, I lost that at the time. Obviously, this sort of switches up the way that you see everything. So if you have a lot of stuff going on, maybe sort time doesn't matter too much. And the sequential order matters more. And so that's when, um, when, when you're shifting stuff around and it asks you to remove sorting, I would just go ahead. But you can always add it back if you want to sort of see uh, based on what people are working on. And sort of a bonus property to add is last edited by, right? In case you want to know who's edited what last, illustrate that. Last edited by, and it was last edited by me. I don't... Obviously, this is my first video. Kind of winged it, let's be real, but I hope that I was able to break it down and explain some of these features in a way which maybe you can sort of organize your databases and your information. And uh, yeah, if you got anything out of this video, please like and maybe subscribe if you want. Thanks. Bye.